Don Day here. I'm the chair of the ASME Y148 Committee on Castings, Forgings, and Molded Parts. You know, we're surrounded by products made of cast, forged, and molded parts. But in spite of this, many people are not aware of the uniqueness of these parts or what it takes to produce them. This video features one of the committee members and my good friend, John Rivers, who will fill you in on these types of parts and the standard used by engineering to define their geometry. My name is John Rivers. I'm Chief Manager of Rivers Precision in Maple Lake, Minnesota. Today we're going to be talking about castings, forgings, and molded parts. Here are some examples on the surface plate of parts produced by those processes. This is the cover for a crankcase of a small engine. It's made out of aluminum done by the die casting process. This is a gear case and cover for a seven and a quarter inch circular saw and it's made out of magnesium, very lightweight. This is a sand casting for a 1930 Bruff motorcycle made in England. This is a gray iron casting. Gray iron castings are used a lot in things like farm machinery and very heavy duty applications. And uh, they're usually made in a sand mold where the molten material flows into the cavity. Examples of forgings. This is a wrench that uh, is a good example. Forgings are made by hot pellets being put in a stamping die and densifying the material very tightly. Another example is the uh, connecting rods for this motorcycle. They were done by the forging process where it came down and densified the material. Model T Fords used a lot of forgings. This is the uh, front spindle for a 1913 Model T. And uh, forgings uh, are very lightweight and very strong. And uh, that was a lot of the credit uh, of forgings for having the Model T being successful because they stood up well on the very bad roads of the day. Examples of plastic moldings. Plastic moldings have been around for a long time. Uh, in the late 30s, it became uh, very popular. This is a 1947 international pickup that was made in 1947. Plastic injection molding. So today's examples are this portable radio and the uh, cover for the bottom. Very fine detail can be achieved by molding. So really, what is unique about uh, parts that are produced from these processes? I like to consider them just a glob of non-uniform material. Surfaces are not flat. They have many imperfections. Holes are not round. They have draft, sinks, voids, and many other problems. Most of the surfaces that are vertical to the parting plane have draft. Or in other words, they're tapered. And that is necessary to be able to uh, eject them efficiently out of a mold cavity. And edges at parting lines, for instance, they have a lot of other problems too from finishing operations. A lot of nicks, gouges, and things that are just normal even on the very finest castings, but something we have to be able to deal with effectively. So when we have all these imperfections you know, on these parts, it gets to be quite a trick as to how you navigate reliably around the, these uh, parts you know, dimensionally and to be able to get repeatable uh, reports as well. So there's a, a tool out there that is very helpful, and it's a standard that is produced by the uh, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME. And their standard is titled Castings, Forgings, and Molded Parts. And the number of this standard is ASME Y14.8-2009. Many of you may be real familiar with the uh, Y14.5 standard that deals with the ge uh, geometric tolerance and dimensioning. But this addresses the things that are unique to these parts. The standard is really comprised of about five different sections. There's a general section there that discusses the scope of well, what is the real goal of, of the standard. It has different uh, units and references to the standard, different figures, notes, addresses dimension and tolerance. Section 2, drawing presentation. There's a, <coughs> we 
when you get into things like should it be separate view drawings or you want to have one drawing for the casting, another for the machining, and another one for other uh, <coughs> secondary uh, things that are done, or do you want to combine them all into one drawing? Well, they get into uh, suggestions on what is to be done when you're trying to make that decision. There's drawing requirements, uh, like things like corner radii, die closure, draft angles. Draft angles are always a big point of controversy there. What is the proper way to describe how draft affects uh, the material? And this standard addresses that and makes it much clearer. Flash extensions, what how you describe them, uh, match draft, party lines, sharp corners, profile tolerancing. We get into section four, datum referencing. Talk about datum targets. How do you es establish datum targets on these uh, globs of material there to uh, be able to repeat effectively? Uh, there's equalizing datums. Datum targets and profiling tolerance. Section five is uh, drawing notes and items. You get into uh, sample notes, like sample general notes and sample local notes. There's a non-mandatory appendice. There's a glossary, sample drawings, and uh, different forms and uh, pr proportions of the symbols. So I'm sure you'll find that this uh, document can be very helpful if you're involved in the design, the production, or the verifying of uh, these parts. So just uh, once again, look up the American Society of Mechanical Engineers on their website and it's Y14.8. And you'll find this uh, a very useful tool. If you need help defining your castings, forgings, and molded parts, be sure to order copies of the ASME Y14.8 standard for those who make or have to read your drawings. Thanks for watching.